All right, week six, day four <clears throat> of the cut. Um, <clears throat> this is turning into just like a normal cut. You know what I mean? I'm down about 10 pounds, a little over 10 pounds. And um, I just don't look anywhere remotely like I wanted to, or like I thought I would after losing 10 pounds. You know what I mean? So, um, we're gonna continue to cut for a little bit longer. Originally, it was just gonna be six weeks, which is technically like like a week from today would have been like the last day. But we're gonna take it a little bit longer and shed an extra few pounds. Um, I was carrying much more fat than I thought I was, so it's no longer like a mini cut at this point. It's just a fucking cut. You know what I mean? So yeah, we're gonna take it a little bit longer than than I was originally planning to. Um, today is hamstrings and glutes. I'm gonna make sure I hit glutes really well today because last time I hit hamstrings and glutes, I didn't really hit, I didn't do any like glute focused movements, you know what I mean? So today we're gonna make sure that the glutes are sufficiently hit. So I'm sitting here laughing, just thinking about in the car with Allie, talking about, <laughs> talking about hitting glutes. And um, yeah, I just posted that video yesterday, I think. And the song for today is going to be Trust Nobody by Hippie Sabotage. Dude, we used to listen to Hippie Sabotage on repeat when I lived in Colorado. Like that was like, that was like the go-to for any, any scenario was Hippie Sabotage. Where it was just like chilling, smoking or parties or skiing or whatever. Like it was just always Hippie Sabotage. So it's a little bit of a throwback. I think this is one of their newer songs actually, but yeah, just going back to listening to Hippie Sabotage is kind of like a throwback for me. Oh, also, fucking, I don't know if you can see it, new tattoo, bro. Fucking sick. I'm kind of stoked on it, you know? We're getting closer and closer to like filling in the arm. Just piece by piece getting there. Which at this point, originally the arm was supposed to be have something for everywhere that I've lived. You know what I mean? So that was like all of this was something for everywhere I've lived. But then I finished it, you know? And, and I got all the places tattooed. So then it was like, all right, now what? So I just got like some like... It's like a compass with a map on it. And it's like, yeah, that's like travel-y. You know what I mean? That's kind of like travel stuff. That fits in with the vibe of the arm. So yeah, we threw that on there. I'm kind of stoked with it. It went much down further my wrist than I thought it would. Yeah, I guess you can't really see, but there's like dots up there. I guess you can't really see the video, whatever. Fuck it. But I thought it was gonna be like, you know, he come down to like mid forearm. And then, and then he put it on there. I was like, yeah, that's going down like all the way to the wrist. Yeah, pretty stoked on it. So now I think I'm gonna try and chill out with the tattoos for a little bit. I've gotten one every few months for the past like year or so. So I think it's time to slow down a little bit, you know, not take up all the space on my arm. Cause once I do that, I don't know what I'll do after. I already don't know what I'm gonna do next. Cause I don't have any more places to get tattooed. Maybe I'll get a chest tattoo. I need some on my ribs. I could do a leg sleeve. But no, we're gonna chill out with the tattoos for a little bit. <laughs> I'm not gonna go overboard with it so fast. It's funny, dude. I got the one on my shoulder back when I was like 19 years old, when I was hiking the trail. I got that one on my shoulder. And that was just kind of like, you know, yeah, it's kind of cool to get. I'm on the trail, I'm living in the woods. Let's hitch a ride into town and, and get a tattoo, ha ha, you know what I mean? And I fucking love the tattoo. But I didn't really get any after that. And then as soon as I got the one on my shoulder, I was like, this is fucking awesome. I'm doing a bunch. I was like, as soon as I got the one on my shoulder, I was like, I'm gonna be spending a lot of money on this in the coming months. And I have, I've spent enough money on it over the past year. <laughs> also today, I think I'm gonna head up to uh, Tennessee today, which means that tomorrow, we'll probably be making a video with Matt Vestejo, the brother-in-law. That fucking Canadian dude. Might be making a video with him tomorrow. We'll see. Hopefully so. I feel like Matt would be. I feel like. I feel like the camera likes Matt. You know what I mean? I feel like. I feel like Matt's at home on camera. I think. And yeah. And y'all. I'm sure y'all will see what I'm talking about tomorrow. I think. Like as soon as the camera turns on, he just like. You know, like a, a light bulb goes off inside of him. He's like, yeah, this is my time. This is this is what I was born for. <laughs> All right, so because I'm gonna be driving six hours up to Nashville today, 
I'm probably gonna try and keep it fairly quick in the gym, just get like an hour lift in there. Hopefully, you know, three movements for hamstrings, two for glutes, and then call it good. Which, five movements in an hour, it's not that crazy, you know what I mean? It's like 10 minutes per movement, plus, you know, the time it takes to set everything up and switching from one thing to the other will probably take up the other 10 minutes, so. Yeah. You know what else I kinda wanna start doing? Is timing my rest period. Like, I feel like a lot of the guys do that. Like, my boss, one of, or one of my bosses, I guess, in Hawaii, he used to be like a huge bodybuilder guy. He's still fucking ripped. And, um, and he would, I was talking to him about lifting, and he said that he would time his rest period. Like, he had a stopwatch. And as soon as he finished his set, he would start it and go for like, I don't know, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, something like that, minute and a half, minute, something like that. And then as soon as that was up, he would go and start his next set. And I might start doing that. Just cause like longer, like if you're, if you're lifting for strength, you're gonna want longer rest periods, right? Like on days you're maxing out, you're gonna wanna rest and fully recover from the last set. But on the days that you're like really trying to fatigue the muscle, you know, you, you only want like 60 seconds of rest and then you get back under, you know, get back under the bench or the bar or whatever and rep it out again until failure. And then each time that you do it, you're gonna be able to do less and less, but you're, you know, pushing that muscle till failure four or five times in a row back to back to back to back so I might I don't know I may start doing that too probably not anytime soon that's just kind of a thought all right fucking hell I'm at seven minutes I don't feel like I've been talking for seven minutes but we're at seven minutes so we'll go ahead and cut it here um take it away hippie sabotage see you guys in there it's gonna be done Trust nobody, I don't even trust my mind I'm losing everybody, they can never take the ground People always switch their sides, people always in my line Never ask me how I'm doing, they just wanna waste my time So I don't hate nobody, just stay up on my life And I won't hurt nobody, so just stay up on my sights People always pull me down, they just told me that I drown When you live and how I'm living, all these leeches come around so we don't trust nobody We don't even trust our minds We're losing everybody From them drugs to suicide I was always getting high Never took a look outside I was living in the dark Thinking I would never shine No, I got everybody If I want it, then it's mine So I help everybody I gave it back when it was time I was broken, I was down I was lost, but now I'm found I was fighting in the trenches With no one ever Dude, every time I wear the beanie in the gym, 
I wear it because it's so fucking chilly outside. And then I just sweat my ass off inside. I just get sweaty as hell. But then I can't really take it off. I don't really have anywhere, anywhere to put it. You know what I mean? I don't want to just carry it around. I don't know. I don't know. Just sweat like a motherfucker when I'm wearing that thing in the gym. Um. Anyways, hamstrings and glutes have been finished up. And um, it was kind of exactly what I said it was going to be. You know what I mean? It, I mean, it was three movements for hamstrings, three movements for glutes. I don't usually do those donkey kicks, but those things are fucking fire. The biggest thing with those is getting your leg up high enough. You know what I mean? Like, it's almost like, like the bottom half of that movement, I really don't feel my glutes that much. It's just the top half. Whenever your leg gets up and like almost parallel to the ground, that's where it really burns. So it's like, I'm thinking about messing around with doing some holds like that. You know what I mean? Where like you go up, hold for a second there and then come down. Cause that would be fucking tough. That would be brutal. So maybe I'll mess around with that next time I do hamstrings and glutes. But um, yeah, I mean, everything else is pretty basic, you know? The only thing I don't like about that gym, it's a really small weight room. So when I want to do things like, um, you know, hip thrusts, it's like I feel like I take up so much space and there's nowhere to go where it's like you're kind of out of the way. You're either right in front of the dumbbell rack or like right behind the squat rack, which maybe I'll throw it in there. That's why, like, for that before that final set, I was telling that guy, like, hey, yo, like, I'm about to get out of your way. Like, he was setting up the squat rack. And I was like, if you want more space, like, let me finish up here, and then and then I'll be out of your way. Just because it's not a big enough weight room to just be out of everybody's way when you're doing something like that that takes up a lot of space. Um, yeah, oh, also, when I was leaving, you know, that's, like, a neighborhood-wise. So it's, you know, mainly, mainly you know, people in like 40s, 50s, and then there's like, you know, some grandparents in there and you know, it's pretty low key vibes. It's a super sick spot. And when I was leaving, I heard two like older women, two grandmas look like grandmas talking about how their weight had gone up. I don't know on what, but I, I just kind of overheard them as I was walking by. And it was one grandma to another grandma saying, yeah, my weight went up last week in whatever she was, whatever movement she was doing. I can't remember, I don't, didn't hear what it was. But the other one was like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. Like I've been trying to get to the, you know, 20s, but I've been stuck in the 15s or something like that. And it's like, dude, like that's so sick. You know what I mean? They're like 80 years old talking about how they're now lifting more than they were before. Yeah, like that's so sick, man. I fucking love it. I fucking love it. There's something about being around very motivated people that is just infectious. You know what I mean? Like if you surround yourself with a bunch of people that are highly motivated, bro, oh, it's hard to stop you, man. I and mean, you can you can motivate yourself obviously you need to be able to motivate yourself but if you surround yourself with people that are all just highly motivated then odds are you're gonna hop in with them and my family's actually been like fucking crushing it for the past fuck year ish honestly because that was when me my dad and my sister signed up for that half iron man we all trained for that for like four or five months you know what i mean that was about a year ago that we signed up um my mom has been going to Pilates literally six or seven days a week. Like, fuck me. And that Pilates shit ain't easy, man. That shit's fucking tough. And she started off doing like the 0.5 classes, then went up to one, then 1.5. Now she's at 2.0, like absolutely crushing. Oh, my dad's looking for another Ironman to sign up for. He's looking for a full Ironman, so he's fucking crushing. My sister's signing up for an Olympic length, length um, triathlon, which I think I'll do with her. She's absolutely fucking crushing. My brother just started college a few weeks, like a month ago, I think now. He started for a month, aced his first test. He's fucking crushing. Like, as a team right now, we're very, very motivated. And like, it's just the stars aligned where all of us are just like all crushing it at the same time. Like it's never happened before. Where like, just the entire fan right now is just absolutely flying, flying. I need to step up my game actually. I feel like out of everybody there, I'm doing the least. Oh man, I gotta start running more. I gotta start running more. I gotta start training for that triathlon, fuck. I can't let my entire family outwork me. Like I can't be the one that's like, yeah, you know, Colin's keeping up, I guess. You know, like I can't be that guy. All right, I gotta, it's time to step it up a little bit. Fucking hell. Just going through the list, I was like, fuck. I might be the slacker here, dude. Holy shit. 
Oh, and not to mention, Allie Johnson, the tall and terrible, who is basically a family member at this point. You know what I mean? She's like right fucking there. Um, crushing at her new job. They've already offered her a new position and also signed up for that triathlon in whatever. Dude, and then Macy with a full-time job and getting her MBA and staying in the gym. I need to step up my game, dude. Wow. I think I'm doing the least right now. <laughs> oh, no. No way. I say all this not to like... I'm trying to like brag on... I'm, I'm, I say all this not to be like, yeah, like our squad is the shit and we're more motivated than everybody. Like, no, I'm just like... I just love how all the people that are closest to me right now are all just super highly motivated right now and absolutely crushing it. And I love that. It's hard to beat that, you know? Like I said, you surround yourself with those people, they're hard. it's hard to fucking beat you, man. It's nice to have those people too, because my dad especially will call your ass out if you're not if you're not working hard enough. You know what I mean? Like when we were training for that half Ironman, if I wasn't getting workouts done, you'd be like, hey man, like you better start working here. This is really going to suck. At one point, he didn't think I was going to do it because I wasn't training enough. And that was like, that really kicked my ass into gear. <laughs> like I went out and hit it way harder than I had any business to hit it. But got me running again. It made me go do like a 50 something mile day. You know, just that one comment that he made. So, all right, I'm once again rambling. This is gonna be a long ass video just because I've talked for seven minutes before and then seven minutes after. So we'll go ahead and cut it here. It's better today than we were yesterday. We'll be better tomorrow than we are today. Good shit, team.